If you created the Aging Room Small Batch Cigar Line, the highest rated boutique cigar brand of our times, what would you do next? Well, if you're Raphael Nodell from Boutique Blend Cigars, you would combine your three most important passions of your life, Cuba, music, and cigars, and create a new classic, La Boheme Cigars. La Boheme is Raphael's take on the golden age of Cuban cigars. La Boheme is a sophisticated blend of extra aged and hard to find tobaccos from the Dominican Republic. A medium bodied cigar, rich in flavors reminiscent of the island he left 35 years ago in a small boat with his family. Why wait for the embargo to be lifted? Smoke La Boheme today. Blending is in our DNA. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Stogie Geeks episode 162. This is a very special four year anniversary. Of course, I have Mr. Will Cooper on the lines via Skype for this segment. Welcome, Will. Hey, Paul, how you doing? And um, you know, just want to give a quick reminder to our listeners. Um, we're asking for 100% uh, participation um, in support of Cigar Rights of America. Basically, if you're not a member, please go and join. Um, you can sign up at cigarrights.org. They'll send you two free cigars. And if you give them my code number, 0159, and send me proof of that, I will send you an additional cigar. And if you renew, the offer is still good for the additional cigar from me. Excellent, excellent. Very nice of you, Will. Uh, we have on the lines via Skype, Raphael Nodell. Welcome, Raphael. Hey, thank you, Paul, and thank you, Will. Thank you for having me here. Congratulations. 162 episodes. Amazing. Four years anniversary. Uh, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah. And thank you for your support, too, by the way. Uh, it's been tremendous. We really appreciate it. You know, someone's oh, got to. No, I think what you guys are doing is uh, it's amazing, and uh, we need to, to help people like you that are really uh, getting all this information on the stuff that we are doing to, uh, to your listeners. And uh, we work so hard, and uh, it's great that they understand uh, everything we're doing. So uh, thank you. Yeah, it's it's a hard job sitting around here smoking cigars and talking to people, but <laughs> someone someone's got to do it. I know it. Um, so, Raphael, I want to. Um, I don't know, Will. I was we were just talking about the various uh, blends and different cigars that you've come out with recently. So, I want to start with La Boheme. Can you tell us about that project? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you for bringing that up. Uh, La Boheme, which is uh, is uh, there is smoking then, and uh, I have here a box as well uh, because it's an amazing uh, art. Uh, of that uh, of, of this brand and and basically Labo M um, really incorporates my three passions in life which is uh, cigars Cuba and music and the name Labo M is from the opera uh, Labo M from, uh, it's a fantastic uh, opera it's, as you guys uh, may know I'm a musician that's one of my passions in life which is uh, I started uh, 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 studying violin since I was six years old in Cuba. And uh, one thing led to another when I came to this country I, uh, uh, as, a, as a refugee. You know, sometimes you don't cannot do everything you want. And it was very difficult in Miami to continue the music uh, uh, career as there was no symphony orchestra, there was no opera group. So I continue in, in other, uh, in healthcare field until I got to the cigars. And uh, now, I, I have the, the opportunity to create plans, to create brands, and obviously that's why I created La Boheme, because uh, like I said, incorporate my passion about music, about cigars, which is an amazing passion of mine, and, uh, and Cuba, uh, it is, uh, it is uh, where I was born, and uh, something that we, uh, we miss every day. But So when I created La Boheme, it's, it's one of my unique creations, and I didn't do it like any other brands. As you know, I specialize uh, in creating very different small batches. Uh, but La Boheme was um, created a little bit different. How we did it was, uh, when I, I left Cuba when I was 15, as, uh, as I mentioned before, I came in a little boat, uh, but I spent four days getting here. And since I was 15, I didn't smoke cigars in Cuba. I tried a couple of times, got sick. Uh, but I remember my, uh, my grandfather, uh, my maternal grandfather, smoking cigars uh, in the park. He was retired, 70 years old, and with his friends. And, and one of the things that cigars do for me is that aroma. That's why the aroma is it's an important part of my uh, creation process. And I remember that 
that uh, that aroma that, that my grandfather was smoking those Cuban cigars. So I created the La Buen uh, blend based on the aroma, and uh, we mixed different tobaccos, we blended different tobaccos, and I didn't taste it, so I didn't know what it tastes, but I was looking for a specific aroma. And once we found it, the, that aroma that was uh, in my head from those years in Cuba, then I tried the cigar. To my surprise, it was good. And uh, so that's how La Buen was created. So it's a Cuban-esque in style, not only because it's, a, it's an artwork from the 1800s of a Cuban brand, but uh, because that smell reminds me what the golden era of Cuban cigar was. And that's... Uh, is that is that largely due to the Habano wrapper on the cigar, Rafael? It, yeah, it is a mix. It is a mix of, uh, of, of things. Uh, the final blend ended up being a wrapper with the Habano seed, but grown in Ecuador. And then the filler is Dominican tobacco. Uh, and the, the blends of the different ages, is, as you guys know, we use very well-aged tobacco in all of our blends. And that that created. However, I tried that different blends and didn't smell like it. So it something hit is the tobacco that is come from a specific uh, farm and a specific age, a specific period, and and that what I was created. So yes, it, it is uh, it is due to the Habano, I'm sure in the in the in the, the you know that that DNA and we said in our mm-hmm. in our advertising, but it's really the DNA of that tobacco, the Cuban. Uh, and and then the different areas and different ages. Mm. So that that's what makes that uh, Ecuador and Habano so special. Is you liked the uh, the climate that it was grown in, the soil it was grown in, uh, and that particular growing environment really gave that cigar the character, right? Because uh, Ecuador and Habano is very popular, right? Absolutely, it's very popular because uh, you know uh, this the, the couple of things that are important on the tobacco, which is the seed that it has, the soil. And the microclimate uh, that it's grown into, and, uh, uh, and and then obviously the aging process and the and how uh, how it's, it's cured, and uh, all those things uh, makes the tobacco what it is. And it's very popular because it's very versatile wrapper, uh, 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 and it's you can you can use it in different ways uh, and balance out the tobacco. It's been used a lot. To my surprise, when I came out with that, there were actually so much. Many other brands that came out that year with uh, with the Habano uh, Ecuador wrapper. Mm. Um, you also is it a, a limited or line extension that represents the La Boheme Encantador? La Boheme Encantador. It was a fascinating uh, story because when I presented the La Boheme to, to my friends and people in the industry, uh, which are people that I go to all the time to see what they think and what they feel about my plants. Um, someone that has uh, been in the industry for a long time, is an icon in the industry, told me, Rafael, <clears throat> this cigar is enchanted. And I have never, never used that word. Obviously, my English uh, 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 dictionary is very small, and the amount of words that I use is very small, uh, having the Spanish as my first language. But uh, he used enchanting as a way to describe a cigar. Obviously, he's a very sophisticated guy, and uh, I had never used it, and it's still in my, in my, in my uh, head. And when we were doing the line extension, now a completely different blend, box press, uh, I, I remember that uh, enchanting. So we call it encantador, which is, uh, which is enchanting in, uh, in English. And is the, so how does the blend differ between the... Um regular La Boheme and the Encantador? Well, for once, I didn't blend it based on the smell only, okay? I didn't use the smell. I use it like I do all my other blends, which are based on the taste. And obviously, the aroma is an important factor for me. But um, we, we uh, blend it a little bit different. So it's used even age, uh, uh, longer tobacco. And uh, a tobacco has been aged longer. And uh, and it has a completely different different taste, and then the box press obviously changes up. When you box press a blend, uh, it, it does change the, the dynamic of the smoking experience, and it changes the flavor profile um, and if it's done in the right, uh, in the right um, uh, factors, in the, in the right amount. And uh, we, uh, so we wanted uh, a, a, a different taste 
uh, while while keeping in mind keeping in, in, in our memory the the Cuban X type. So it is more in line, I believe, with my old uh, my other blends and a, 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 a profile that I am very fond of, which is uh, tobacco with character and aroma at the same time, uh, but it burns well and it leaves a, a, a balance and it leaves a very little aftertaste on, on the, on, uh, as an aftertaste when you smoke the cigar. Mm. And the torpedo in the La Boheme Encantador, is that a bo- that's a box press torpedo? Yeah, it is a box press torpedo. And, and actually, it's uh, funny that you ask because it's one of my favorites. Uh, you know, making torpedo and making certain sizes in the in the cigars uh, are very uh, different, uh, the, the construction. And, uh, and the way this torpedo is and then box press, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a beautiful, beautiful work of art, I believe. Uh, because, I really, uh, I like the box press torpedo sizes lately. Uh, there have been a few different brands that have come up with the box press torpedo. I find it, it, like for me as a cigar smoker, if I'm going to smoke a torpedo, I like the box press because I feel like it gives you a little more airflow, a little more burn surface. It burns a little better than a traditional torpedo. Uh, and I, I get a better experience out of that box. Oh, press no, torpedo. no doubt. No, no doubt. And that's why I like it so much. You know, it's a delicate situation because you you're pressing that smaller surface, so you want to make sure the cigar doesn't get clogged. So you really have to to use the best uh, tabaquero, the best roller, the best cigar makers on this to make sure uh, you have that very nice flow, uh, which is so important in order to uh, to maximize the taste and uh, and the profile of the cigar. Will, did you have more questions for Rafael about the La Bohem line? Yeah, I do. So, Rafael, I've actually smoked both the Labo Hems. I'm actually smoking the original Mimi in that right. Petit Corona oh, wow. sauce, which, which I'm telling you, this is a great Petit Corona you're getting. And it's when you talk about aroma, and I get that Cuban twang off this thing, it's, it is really a good cigar. But I was amazed when I went to the Encantador how that – the box press and the tweaks you did and using that higher priming wrapper just made for a completely different cigar. And it's a it's a rich cigar, is what I like to say with that Encantador. It is, and I, I actually read uh, one of your uh, uh, your reviews about the cigar, and I was very happy that you captured that because uh, obviously for the Encantador, we use a higher prime. However, that Mimi that you have, uh, the, that is, it's, it's a great cigar, and one that almost didn't go to the market because we prepare that brand in three other sizes, and uh, I, uh, I, don't, I didn't want to, to, uh, uh, to put in the market a smaller one. I was afraid, because this is very old tobacco, and this is very well aged, and it's very expensive, so such a small um, cigar. But uh, my partner, Hank, uh, was, uh, convinced me to do it, uh, because when we tried that blend, we tried it in many different sizes, and uh, I have to tell you, uh, we created uh, something very unique on that, and that blend, uh, adjusted to the small size, of course, was a fantastic, fantastic small cigar. And some blends don't do good in very small cigars, depending on how much tobacco you put in uh, and the type of tobacco, but it worked out tremendously, and it happens to be one of my uh, best-seller sizes. And uh, to my surprise, so I, for once, I listened to someone else, and uh, it worked. Uh, so I, I have to say thanks to Hank and to my partners too for, uh, for doing that, absolutely. Yeah, no, I, I, I definitely agree. You know, the, the, I'm like you, sometimes it doesn't work in these small sizes. The, the other cigar that really I thought shined in a, in a small size was Davidoff Nicaragua's Petit Corona. And this is kind of giving me that same experience in terms of how the small size is just making that blend shine. Um, Absolutely. Lot. And by the way, it's funny you mentioned Nicaragua uh, Davidoff because it's one of my favorite cigars last year or in 2013 where uh, we were the number uh, two cigar um, by Cigar Aficionado. The number third was uh, was uh, Nicaragua. It was a Toro size. But it's a brand, blend that I love. I, I smoke so much and uh, I really enjoy it. And you're right. That blend was adjusted perfectly. And uh, you know, you know. Well, this is a this is a, an art, uh, and and sometimes you know things do not work. Sometimes 
things to work. And, and sometimes you put your best effort and things don't work. But I, just like in Nicaragua, I feel the same way. It worked outstanding in, in, in the small size, yes. Yeah, no, I agree. And I've seen you I've seen you smoking those. That's why I didn't hesitate to mention that, because I've seen you smoking those on social media. So No, absolutely. I love I, I love uh, I, well, I'm in the cigar industry because I love cigars and I smoke fifty percent of the cigars that are not mine. One because I love it, second to understand what other people are doing that are so good and learn. Uh, this is a learning process, this is a continuous journey. And uh, you learn from the masters, and uh, you learn from people that are willing to try new things and are willing to blend new tobacco. Uh, and and I do spend a lot of time smoking and enjoying. And uh, I remember one time I uh, I have another good friend cigar maker, and uh, he got a cigar from someone else, and he took the label, and I I was smoking a, a cigar of him, and I didn't take the label. Say, well, you don't take the label off. He said, no, why? You know how much money you spend on this label and our work and all this, and uh, this represents the cigar. So I, I do enjoy all the cigars, and uh, I, I this is a learning for me, and I will continue learning. And this is, and I appreciate the the art, the artistry that goes into into making a good cigar. Uh, speaking of the cigar um, that was rated. Uh for all intents and purposes, number one in the U.S., the F55 Concerto is what I'm smoking now. Wow, that's, uh, that is uh, obviously a cigar that helps us put us a little bit higher in the map, and uh, that, that I believe is, a, is, is, is an unbelievable blank. Very uh, good cigar. I, I have to tell you a story. When I came out with that cigar, two people and two organizations, different organizations, told me that was the worst cigar they ever tried. And uh, well, that took me back, uh, back. And as a matter of fact, that blend, that blend was created immediately for another company uh, that wanted to release a Dominican uh, brand. And um, went to the factory, uh, and I just worked on that that blend for them, uh, a, a tobacco. Because you know, like like most people do, when you get someone to your house, you want to give your the best. And uh, I I found that we found that uh, wrapper in Germany. We bought it from Dominican. And it was about February 20, 23rd that we were working on the on the blend. And I gave it to these people. They sent it to some of their best uh, um, friends. And they called me back and said, Rafael, this is the worst cigar we ever, ever had. Uh, wow, that took me back. And, uh, you know, I decided I'm going to do it on my own because I believe it's a good cigar. And I prefer the blend. And I, 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 I uh, release it under the Age of Room Quattro. And I sent it to my first uh, store, big store in the United States. The owner called me uh, on the line with my rep and said, you know what, uh, all those 300 boxes, uh, we need to return it because uh, it, is, uh, it is a bad, bad cigar. Wow. <laughs> that took me. Can you imagine? This is a second company that tells me uh, it was a worse cigar. And uh, I, I believe on what we were doing in our, in, in our group and, uh, and, and the plan. And I, I just did a full release, and uh, and that store, I'm happy to say, that sells a lot of those cigars. Uh, but I, you know, going back, what I think happened was that that wrapper is a Sumatra from Indonesia. Most of the Sumatra that is being used today is uh, is in, um, in in out of Ecuador or other other countries. It's a seed, but it's it's not really from from a, a genuine Indonesian one. And the taste, when I told the people this is a Sumatra, they were expecting something else. That's why when we released the blend, I, I took out Sumatra uh, from, the, uh, from the label, uh, not to really create a, an expectation. And uh, obviously, uh, it was well received. It was highly rated. And it's still today, is uh, one of our uh, best sellers. Yeah, no, I, I really enjoy this wrapper. Uh, in fact, uh, not to give too much away, right, from various blending seminars, but when I do encounter it in a blending seminar, um, I can om- I can never pick it out. The Indonesian Sumatra, I, I just, I, I can't pick it out because it's a very unique uh, taste, which says I should pick it out, but I, I, I don't. Um, but it's extremely enjoyable, and uh, it's a great, it, great choice for the cigar. I think it, it balances well the blend, and obviously yeah. it tells uh, the rest of the story, rounds the story of what... Uh, flavor that you're trying to, to convey, 
Uh, so it, it can give too much or too little, depending on what you want to use it as. Uh, we were fortunate that I believe we balanced it very well with our Dominican tobacco, and the, the creation uh, uh, ended up uh, working uh, very well. But that goes to, uh, to something that I always said, because I was just uh, with uh, another cigar manufacturer, and I was just saying, you know, sometimes you have to believe in yourself, and so many times it may not work, uh, but, uh, you know, I, I, I call it a gut feeling. Uh, if you, you know, if God tells you this is good. I used to blend, and Will and I have talked many times about this, and with you as well. Uh, we, I used to blend cigar just to sell cigar. And now, and I think the turning point in my career and my journey in the cigar was uh, we blend now things that I like and profile that I create and I believe on. If I don't believe on, I don't care if it's going to sell a lot. I did it what I believe. So I went to create it for the masses, to create it for me, which is not everyone will enjoy it, but uh, thanks God, many people have enjoyed it. Mm. It's one of those things that if you try to make everybody happy, sometimes you'll end up making very few people happy. So you got to, exactly, sometimes you got to go with the gut and do what you believe in. That's, that's correct. And, you know, um, there are many, many good cigars in the market, and I smoke many of them. Uh, and, and they, they may be your palate, may not be your palate, but at the end, um, I, I believe in continued developing very small batches with their different flavor profile. One thing that we're very proud of is that in a lot of the, uh, we, as you know, we have released a lot of small batches. Now one person can tell me that this one is smoked like the other one. When they came to La Buen, going back to La Buen Encantador, the new release the extension to La Buen, people say, man, nah, you know, it's going to be the same cigar, uh, box press. And I said, no, because we changed what we wanted to, to do on that. We wanted to tell a different story. We wanted to tell a different It doesn't mean that one is better than the other. I believe, I happen to believe they're both good. But the thing is, it tells you something. It gives you something different uh, from the other one. So I am proud that none of my blends, and you know, it's it's a very difficult balance to create because you don't want every new blend to, to taste the same, and uh, you know, so that's that's a challenge every every single day. And I think you've done a very, and I'm not just saying this, but I think you've done a very good job with that um, since you really launched the boutique blends umbrella, where the brands have their own identity. And then the blends within those brands each have an identity, and and there's been no duplication. That being said, Paul and I were talking about something right before the show. Um, you know, in that you just come out with the swag, uh, the swag Connecticut Brown. How is that different from the Haval that's come out? I haven't Impressive. smoked the Brown yet. That's why I, I don't know the answer to that one. It is very different uh, because this is a, a new seed. Um, it's a seed that have been. Uh, um, in the in the development of the the, the seed uh, was taken in consideration. It was a blend with uh, it was mixed with some had some Habanos characteristic from the previous Habano seed. And what you get is that on that particular one is more flavor and a medium body. You know, Connecticut is one of the it is the best seller wrapper uh, 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 in the United States. But many of the cigar smokers have continued developing their palates and are looking for more a body to the cigar. So my Havao, my, my Havao uh, aging room is a cigar that is uh, mild, uh, we call it mild plus because it has some, some a lot of flavor due to the age of the tobacco and the type of tobacco we use inside. Now we took a step further on this and a little bit further uh, on the flavor profile and it's uh, obviously doesn't have the characteristic of Havana wrapper but it's a medium uh, with tremendous amount of aroma and flavor. So it's a little bit different. Yeah, and that would fit in kind of, what, again, with what you're doing with swag, which is a little more of a contemporary, a little more edgy, where aging room's a little more traditional. So I think that's a great fit under that brand for that. That's correct. And if you look right now, the swag, which is exactly that, it was created for the younger population, the people that are looking for something new, more edgy from the packaging to the design. Uh, it's not your typical uh, Dominican cigar, 
then uh, we call it actually, uh, not, it's, it's not your father's Dominican cigar. Just keep in mind, when I started in this uh, journey, most of the Dominican tobacco that I tried, or the, that I was, uh, might not be everyone, but most of what I tried, uh, the cigars were mild, flavor and aroma, but not a lot of body. For that, you needed to go to Nicaragua, Honduras, to Central America, Costa Rica, uh, sometimes mixed with some Panama or some Peruvian tobacco to give that body. But uh, we, we, I believe in the Dominican, and what we did with have, uh, the, the SWAT line was incorporate some of the things that I have just come from Nicaragua, blending with Nicaragua tobacco that I wanted, that I love, but taking the basis, uh, the Dominican tobacco with a lot of flavor and a lot of aroma, with burning, uh, and, and good combustion, and uh, I wanted to incorporate that. So that's the swag. And the AG room, obviously, dedicated to those small batches, small, hard to find, rare tobaccos. And then La Boheme with a more Cuban S, more uh, your traditional line, uh, but uh, still getting flavors in you know, all of my profiles. Absolutely. Absolutely. The, uh, the other cigar, you know, you speak in a swag, and, and I think it's been one of the underrated cigars you've come out with, with the one last year, the, the Swag Black. That's your that's the one that contains the Lajero. And yes. I I tell you what, that, that is a strong cigar, no question about it. But that cigar, the combustion on that cigar, for, for all that Lajero you have in there, is, is just fantastic. It, it consistently burns well. So what did, what did you have to do to kind of get – a Lajero blend, which typically notoriously doesn't blend, uh, burn well, to, to kind of get it to burn like that. Because it, it is a very well-made cigar. It's a very well-kept secret, and which is not so much a secret, but it's hard to do. It is time. And uh, they, they say time, uh, you know, heals everything. And it heals the burning process as well. Because when you age the tobacco, the necessary amount of time, which is sometimes is not economically possible, uh, many brands, it's difficult to keep the tobacco so long age. We have decided that we want in all of our blend, whether it's a cigar you pay for $6 or $9 or $10, use very, very well aged tobacco. And that is the secret. The, the Ligero being the, the higher primates uh, leaves on the, uh, uh, on the plant, get a lot of sun. So it develops more, got more juice, got more nicotine, got more uh, flavor. Uh, but because of all those good things, it's, it's, it burns less. The combustion is less because of all the uses and everything else. But when you age it, uh, you lose a little bit, a little bit of that uh, full body, but you get the true flavor and aroma of that cigar. So it's a very simple answer, time. Time, which, you know, <laughs> it's an unfortunate thing these days. We don't have a lot of time in our hands, uh, unfortunately. Uh, that that is something that is very simple. Good soil, good seed, good uh, process, uh, good curing, good aging, and time, time. Raphael, uh, tell me. I know we did a, a segment on this, correct, Will, on the the Romeo collaboration. Yeah. Yes, we did that interview in Charlotte. Yeah, could just we recap some of that? Uh, well, how did that project come to come about? Yeah, that's. Uh, I remember uh, when we did the national launching, the uh, launching of the of the, of the cigar um, uh, was in Tinderbox of uh, North Carolina with our friend uh, uh, Greg Cass. Um, we had a chance to talk to uh, to you guys. Will was there, and uh, Brad, uh, the vice president of uh, of uh, uh, Alpha, this USA, uh, was there doing the presentation together. And, uh, and it's something, again, outside of the box, which is something that we have been trying to do. Not always successful, but uh, we try to think differently. And uh, uh, Altadis is a company that has a tremendous amount of, uh, uh, of great uh, resources and uh, an unbelievable experience on cigars because they have, uh, they have a group of maestros, which are people that are Collectively, I think I have over 100 and some years of experience, or maybe more. And uh, so together, we put together, I, I, I approached them, I, uh, I, I had the dream of, of making such a, uh, like, I, like I always say, I love other people's cigar. And when they launched the Romeo, which is a departure, everything they had done before with the Romeo and Juliet, the Romeo by Romeo and Juliet, I immediately fell in love with that cigar. And uh, I, I remember um, one of the, the, the people in their company, 
country. So me in a store buying a box for cigar. I tell you, I don't buy a lot of boxes, but I do buy uh, cigars. And uh, and uh, you know, they 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 thought that I was just trying to taste it. And I say, no, I you know, I buy this and I smoke this cigar. And uh, it's a cigar that I smoke on a regular basis. I love it. It was something different. I love the approach to marketing, to approach to design, and the approach to the taste profile that they were trying to create. So I respected that, and uh, it was my dream to one day be able to collaborate. So I approached them with the idea, the design, and uh, and uh, many of my friends and colleagues that I told them that, they said, oh, are you crazy? You're a dreamer. And you know what? I am a dreamer. I am a, a, not crazy, but I'm a dreamer. I, I believe in uh, my whole life has been uh, going against uh, everything else that everyone is doing. So I... Uh, I, I presented the idea, and it was a collaboration b- between them. Ended up using the tobacco uh, from Pochi uh, in, in the Dominican Republic, my partner in, the, in this journey, and this, uh, and, and we were able to together uh, tweet it and come to the to, to the current blend, and uh, it is amazing. And their marketing material says it, it's, it's exactly the truth. Uh, when you put two passions together, it's no. Work. There's no limit to what you can do. Uh, there are certain things that I can do, others that I cannot for many, many type of things, uh, uh, many difficulties, and, and they the same way. So they 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 agree, and together we are doing that, and and it has been a very successful uh, collaboration, I would say. Yeah, I enjoy I enjoyed that cigar a lot, and. You know, I think it's the first time that the a cigar maker that had the number two cigar got together with a cigar maker that had a number three cigar. So there's, I think, a little bit of trivia there that will go down in cigar history. And I think the result was really good. So maybe you guys will get a number one because of that. But it's a maybe, great cigar. Maybe one day we can, you know, my, my whole say was three, you know, minus two will be one. And so we may, we may not get that. Uh, that is besides the point. Uh, but... Uh, it is certainly, it is certainly to their credit, uh, a huge company like that with so many resources and so many knowledge and history and uh, and um, and dedication to the cigar. Uh, it's the biggest, uh, one of the, not the biggest. Well, yeah, it is the biggest cigar company in the world. I mean, you put together the Habanos and everything else. So it's a it's a company that is a tremendous tremendous uh, uh, portfolio of brands and. and for a small guy that came in a little boat from Cuba to be working with uh, the biggest cigar company in the world, developing my own interpretation of the Romeo uh, brand, it was uh, it is a dream come true. And trust me, that many times I still do not believe it that uh, that is happening. It's funny, Raphael. If 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 cigar aficionado ever called me up to write a piece, I'd be there in a heartbeat. I mean, so I understand, you know. Something like that is a is a big dream, and you should be very proud of that. Thank you, thank you. Yep. Raphael, what are some of the other projects that you've uh, been working on recently, or what you know, what are you coming out next? Well, um, as I like to say, my uh, our offices, our our factory is a laboratory of uh, of new ideas and new creations, and we constantly work in a new plane. As a matter of fact, I'm, I'm trying new plants uh, right now in the office. Uh, I invited some people from the outside that they're they're smoking this this plant, uh, something that perhaps we do three or four years from now, two or three years from now. Um, we just launched the F59, which is the Quattro line, which is uh, it will replace the Agent Group Quattro F55 that you're smoking. I have the right uh, the, the unbelievable rating. Uh, and so we're expanding on the small production. Uh, every year we release the A Group Fortissimo series, which is started on M21 and 20 and M19 this year. It's a small production of 20, 20,000 cigars, more or less. So we're expanding in the, in the collaboration. We also introduce uh, A Group thing number one, uh, which is tobacco age from 97, 98, and 99. We're working on expanding that line with some small a small uh, micro blends, if, if you if you like uh, to call it like that, and then we are uh, continue to work in blend for uh, the expansion of that collaboration uh, with the wrong brand brand, and we continue now with different blends uh, as well. 
to that. So what you're going to get from us is continued release throughout the year of, uh, of a small batches, very old tobacco. And it's funny because now we get calls from other manufacturers that say, you know, I have this tobacco, which is about 10 or 15 years old, very small. I can put it on my blend. Would you like to try it to see if it's good for one of your projects? So uh, I thought it was going to be hard to continue releasing a small batches of very old and rare to find tobacco. But thanks, God, many people believe in me, and many people call me all the time and say, would you like to do this? There's not much I can do with this, but I know in your hands you can do it. Uh, so uh, you are continue to see new releases, expansion of these small batches. That's awesome. Well, we look, we look forward to it. Well, you got more questions for Raphael? Yeah, kind of going on the business end of things, Raphael, I'm calling you right now the road warrior because you have been on the road, like you're the hardest working guy in the business right now. You've been on the road probably more than anyone this year. Um, are you getting tired at all? <laughs> because you're, just, um, you're doing a great job with that. Thank you, Will. Physically it is, it gets, uh, it gets uh, I cannot recuperate as much as I did before, as fast as I did before. For example, we were in Germany in our, just like the IPCPR, uh, the show in the United States that is a trade show for the cigar, the main and the most important one, the same one we have in uh, Germany, in Dortmund. And I was there visiting stores. We're now in Tenskat uh, in 17 other countries besides the United States. So I went to Germany to the show and then continued to Munich where we took uh, uh, what I like to say the preaching uh, of, of my, my aging room. And uh, we continue in Munich with uh, <laughs> Oktoberfest with uh, five retailers from there, which is fantastic. I never drink so many beers in my wife, so much beer in my, mm -hmm. in my life. Four liters of beer that afternoon alone. Uh, my wife uh, drink like two, two liters away and hot you like uh, three or four. Um, and then we continue in some other, uh, some other stores. And it was, you know, I have to tell you, it is it's rewarding to get to a store. Uh, near my hotel, uh, I was not planning to visit that store. It was not in my itinerary. But some one of the cigars at the hotel told me there's a store here in the corner. So I go there. I they have my Labo M. It's like five boxes open, and uh, I, I said, you know, can you tell me a little bit about uh, Labo M? He said, oh my God, this is going a great guy, Rafael Nodal. And the guy start uh, keep talking about. It. I said, well, I'm Rafael Nodal. <laughs> No, do you play tennis? And no, no, I'm the one that makes a cigar. <laughs> and, uh, so, being on the road is uh, is rewarding. It's a way for me, with my limited resources, to go to the public and to put my cigars on their hand and say, please smoke my cigar. And I learned this from a from a base uh, 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 in in two guys a smoke shop in in, in New Hampshire. Uh, Dave Garapolo, and he said, you know, give it a shot. And all I ask these people is give it a shot, try it. And uh, tomorrow I'm leaving to New York City. We have a, an event in uh, Nat Sherman uh, in the afternoon, and then uh, in the evening at uh, Carnegie Cigar Club. Oh, and I so love that place. I've been to Carnegie. Carnegie's an iconic cigar oh, cigar bar. I love both. Yeah. Those are two of my favorite places. And you're doing both events the same day. The same day, one to seven, and seven thirty to eleven, and seven thirty to eleven, and. It's funny because uh, someone told me, well, this is right next to the Carnegie Club, uh, the Carnegie Hall, which is a famous theater, a historical mm -hmm. theater. And uh, it's, um, now you're going to be close. I said, well, wait a minute. I gave a recital uh, in, in, in the Carnegie Hall in, uh, in, in 1982 when I was starting music in, in New York City. Mm -hmm. So uh, I am right next to it. So... For me, I call this tour, which it will end on Friday. There's another big event, uh, the, the New York, New Jersey um, uh, Police, uh, Port Authority Police Gala. And it's their association, and they have a cigar dinner. And uh, that will be my last stop of this uh, tour that I've been doing for three months now, that is called Dreams Do Come True uh, Tour, which is uh, uh, places and, uh, that are important to me and uh, that have something to do with my life. And uh, can you imagine, to, you know, to someone like me that came to New York City right after I came from the boat, the week after, went to study there. A little town in Cuba where I'm from, and go to New York City, all these huge, big uh, uh, um, uh, buildings, 
And uh, that song that says, you can make it here, you can make it anywhere. And being able to finish my tour with, uh, I did David off, both David off scores two weeks ago, and now Nat Sherman, which is, these are icons. These are like uh, the closest thing we have for royalty in the United States on the cigar. Being able to finish there, uh, my tour, uh, uh, because for me, it's a dream come true. So yes, Will, it's, uh, it's very debilitating for the health and for the family and very difficult in, in my in my family. But uh, it's something that I enjoy, that I have a passion, and uh, we are creating this from the ground up. So it takes hard work, it takes perseverance, and, uh, and, and, and what is it? It's a unique opportunity to go there and both of these stores in one day and do uh, and, and, and uh, present my cigars. To, to the public. It's, it's an amazing opportunity, one that I don't take for granted, that I'm thankful every day, and, uh, and I, 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 I work hard when I go there, uh, preaching, what I call uh, uh, the people about my cigars, and, and then being able, I was in Davidoff uh, two weeks ago doing a, an event, and, and, and some guy comes from, a customer comes, and he said, well, I'm from Israel, I just came in, uh, I follow this magazine of, uh, you know, the ratings on Israel, and I said, well, uh, uh, before that, I told him, well, we are being uh, uh, lucky enough that we are in every cigar magazine in the world. And the guy said, well, uh, funny that you mentioned that I have this magazine here from Israel. And, uh, oh, my God, I, I thought like I was going to be, well, this is, not, I'm not going to be in a, in a magazine, cigar magazine from Israel. What do you know? They have the swag black rating there, and they have the AG room, and they have La Boheme mm-hmm. uh, rating on that, on that magazine. So we have been very lucky, and uh, it is uh, due to many, many factors, including my partners, our dedication, or every one of the team. This is a team effort. I'm the face. I'm the one here uh, talking to you guys. Uh, but uh, if it wasn't for everyone else that uh, has so much dedication like I do, uh, uh, it would not be possible. But uh, this is my way of continuing working, but at the same time to learn from those people and to really get feedback immediately. And I think, you know, Will, going about that, I, I, talking about that, uh, 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 getting uh, so much traveling, but what, if this is a, the same thing that I, I would have done as a musician. Uh, uh, we, a, a musician, get feedback immediately, immediately from the public. You play, and if they like it, they upload, and they buy your tickets, and, and they don't like it, they won't upload. Uh, uh, and and uh, we get in these places... Instead of being sitting here in my offices, in, in my, I call my, my laboratory, then I'm able to sit there and get immediate feedback uh, from the people. And, you know, not three months later, not four months later, immediately. And that, for me, is an amazing, amazing experience. Excellent. Excellent. Will, any more questions for, for Raphael? No, uh, Raphael, again, thank you for, you know, again, for the support, for the time. I mean, uh, it's, you know, I love watching this journey of you grow and, you know, we wish you all the best and look forward to having you back on the show again for sure. Well, thank you very much to both of you. And I really thank you for the amazing job that you guys are doing, translating our dreams and creations and our failure to, to people that are really want to listen. And at the, at the end of the day, it's the people that we do you, us, and everyone else is doing it for. So I appreciate that being a liaison. And wow, 162 uh, episodes, fourth anniversary. You guys continue to grow. The dedication, I follow you guys as well. I follow what you're doing with your write-offs and you write on the beat all the time. So congratulations and thank you. Thank you very much, Raphael. Thank you. Uh, With that, we take a short break. So stay tuned. We'll be back. 